Yes, I'm good with this. This is my, my specialty, yes. Presbyterian education, thank you. <laughs>
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Bless the Lord, who forgives all our sins, whose mercy endures forever. The Lord be with you. Friends, welcome as we gather together on this holy night, this night where we commemorate and celebrate the time when Jesus gathered together with his friends to share his final meal with them. The night where he commanded us to do likewise. The night where he washed their feet. The night where he served them just as he continues to offer to serve and love us. Tonight we share in God's promised presence with us in word and in sacrament and in the gathering of us disciples. We wash one another's feet. We break bread together and we keep watch in the chapel after our service as long as we can until that moment at midnight when we all have the experience of deserting Jesus, of running away. We will return tomorrow to the foot of the cross, but tonight we celebrate God's promised presence with us as we gather. Our Lord Jesus Christ says, if you love me, keep my commandments. And unless I wash you, you have no part in me. Brothers and sisters, on this most holy night, we enter into the three days of the celebration of our Lord's Paschal victory, his death and his resurrection. Those of our community who are to be baptized this Eastertide will be made one with Christ, dying to sin and rising to newness of life in him. As we begin tonight, therefore, we receive from our Archbishop Jeremy the holy oils blessed and set apart for the sacramental life of our parish. The oil of the sick, by the laying on of hands and with anointing with this oil and with the prayerful support of this community, may those who are sick experience the healing presence of Christ. Amen. The oil of baptism, anointed with this oil and assisted by the example of this community, may those who are to be baptized know that Christ calls them by name and makes them his own and shares with them his victory over sin and the power of evil. Amen. The oil of chrism, anointed with this fragrant oil, may all who are baptized and confirmed, all who are ordained to the service of God's people and this community whose house of prayer is dedicated to God's glory, fill the world with the sweet fragrance of Christ's gospel and be built up as living stones into a temple filled with the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Compassion and forgiveness belong to the Lord our God, though we have rebelled and wandered far off. 
Let us then ask for mercy, confessing our sins in penitence and in faith. Merciful God, our maker and our judge, we have sinned against you in thought, word and deed, and in what we have failed to do. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. We repent and are sorry for all our sins. Father, forgive us. Strengthen us to love and obey you in newness of life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, who has promised forgiveness to all who turn to him in faith, pardon you and set you free from all your sins, strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. us pray that we may love one another as Christ has loved us. Grant, Lord, that we who receive the holy sacrament of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ may be the means by which the work of his incarnation shall go forward. Take, consecrate, break, and distribute us to be for others a means of your grace and vehicles of your eternal love through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated for our first reading. And it's a great delight this evening to be welcoming into our midst um, a former colleague of mine, Sue Bora, who is over and visiting from Perth in Western Australia. She's visited us before, if she looks familiar, but this is her first time with us for the great three days of Easter, and so she'll be preaching us, leading us through Maundy Thursday and Good Friday and our dawn service on Easter Sunday. So thank you for joining us, Sue. The Old Testament reading 
is from the book of Exodus. <clears throat> the Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, this month shall mark for you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year for you. Tell the whole congregation of Israel that on the 10th of this month, they are to take a lamb for each family, a lamb for each household. If a household is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join its closest neighbor in obtaining one. The lamb shall be divided in proportion to the number of people who eat of it. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a year old male, you may take it from the sheep or from the goats. You shall keep it until the 14th day of this month. Then the whole assembled congregation of Israel shall slaughter it at twilight. They shall take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts and the lintel of the houses in which they eat it. They shall eat the lamb that same night. They shall eat it roasted over the fire with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. Do not eat any of it raw or boiled in water, but roasted over the fire with its head, legs, and inner organs. You shall let none of it remain until the morning. Anything that remains until the morning you shall burn. This is how you shall eat it your loins girded, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand, and you shall eat it hurriedly. It is the Passover of the Lord, for I will pass through the land of Egypt that night, and I will strike down every firstborn in the land of Egypt, both human beings and animals. On all the gods of Egypt I will execute judgments. I am the Lord." The blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you live. When I see the blood, I will pass over you, and no plague shall destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. This day shall be a day of remembrance for you. You shall celebrate it as a festival to the Lord. Throughout your generations, you shall observe it as a perpetual ordinance. Hear the word of the Lord. Thanks.
A reading from Paul's first letter to the Corinthians. For I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus on the night when he was betrayed took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also after supper saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Hear the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. I give you a new commandment, says the Lord. Love one another as I have loved you. Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. The Lord be with you. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. John. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Now, before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put it into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe, and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, you do not know now what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head, and Jesus said to him, One who has bathed does not need to wash except for the feet, but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him. For this reason he said, Not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet, had put on his robe, 
and had returned to the table, he said to them, Do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example that you also should do as I have done to you. Very truly I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me. And as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. For the Gospel of the Lord, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I pray that I may speak in the name of God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Every Sunday we celebrate the Eucharist, for every Sunday celebrates the risen Christ. In celebrating the Eucharist Sunday by Sunday, we enter into sacred time. We enter into ritual or liturgical time. We enter a space and time that is timeless. We enter into a time where past, present and future are one. In the Eucharist, we carry out Jesus' instruction in his last meal with the disciples described in our second reading. In so doing, we look back to the past of Jesus' communion with his disciples and his death and resurrection. We celebrate the presence of the risen Christ with us now. Christ is present with us now as we celebrate his death and resurrection and what this means for us and the world. And we look forward. We are given a foretaste of the heavenly banquet, the completion of God's work, accomplished in Christ's death and resurrection. In sacred time, ritual time, liturgical time, past, present and future are one. And so it is in our celebration of the Eucharist tonight. But tonight, this Thursday night, we celebrate the Eucharist as the first liturgical, liturgical act of the Triduum, that most sacred time in the liturgical year, when over three years we focus on the narrative of the Passion, Crucifixion, Death and Resurrection of Jesus. In these next three days, the church invites us to walk liturgically alongside Jesus every step of the way through time. It invites us to walk through time in a linear way from the Last Supper we commemorate tonight through the events leading up to Jesus' crucifixion and death to his resurrection. Although Christ's death and resurrection are ultimately inseparable in our Eucharistic celebration, 
We are invited to enter more deeply into the various aspects of the narrative of Christ's death and resurrection and what it means for our lives now. The narrative as a whole is always present, but its various facets will be foregrounded for us at different times as we move through it over these days. What is foregrounded tonight are the events of the Last Supper hosted by Jesus. These are captured in two scenarios, the institution of the Lord's Supper and Jesus' washing of the disciples' feet, which we reenact tonight. Central to both of these is Jesus' love for the disciples, a relationship of intimacy and love offered to them and to us. The bread and wine are symbols of the body and blood of Christ that Jesus as host offers, point to Jesus' love poured out even unto death for them and for us. In washing their feet, our feet, Jesus, as host, takes the role of a servant and in this act of service enters into an intimate relationship of love with his disciples and with us. The poet Mal Malcolm Geith sums up the significance of these narrated events this night in this way. And here he shows the full extent of love to us whose love is always incomplete. In vain we search the heavens high above, the God of love is kneeling at our feet. Though we betray him, though it is night, he meets us here and loves us into light. The divine love portrayed in both scenarios is given to the disciples who do nothing to deserve it. Judas will betray, Peter will deny, and they will all desert Jesus. And so it is with us. This love is poured out on us whose love is incomplete. All that is asked of us is to simply receive that love. The disciples are told to take and eat the body and blood of Christ given for them. And the disciples need to allow Jesus to minister to them in loving service in washing their feet. Only so, as is clear from the dialogue between Jesus and Peter, can there be an intimate relationship with Jesus. And so it is with us. We are asked to receive this love, to allow Jesus to be in relationship with us through serving us. Only in this way, says our Gospel reading, are we truly able to love one another. In imitation of Jesus, the members of the community are commanded by Jesus to wash each other's feet in a relationship of love and service with one another as Jesus has loved and served them, as Jesus loves and serves us. This command is not a law that we must work to fulfil. It is a consequence of experiencing Jesus' love of allowing Jesus to love and serve us. Love of and service to others flows naturally from accepting Jesus' love for us. We need simply to accept Jesus' love for us. But is this really so simple? How difficult it can be, can be to allow Jesus to love and serve us is made very clear in our Gospel reading. Intrinsic to John's scenario of the Last Supper, with Jesus kneeling at the feet of the disciples and washing their feet in an act of loving intimacy at its heart, is the spectre of Judas as the betrayer. John goes on to describe Jesus as receiving the bread from Jesus as part of the communion meal. But instead of accepting Jesus' love and offer of intimate relationship, Judas goes out into the night to betray him. And Peter, though having his feet washed by Jesus in an act of loving service and intimacy, goes on to completely deny that he ever even knew Jesus. Almost immediately after the Last Supper, Judas and Peter reject Jesus and his love for them. They are unable, at least at this point, to accept Jesus' offer of love. 
Allowing Jesus to love and serve us is not easy sometimes. Allowing the God of love to kneel at our feet is sometimes difficult. And yet our poem says, as our poem says, though we betray him, though it is night, he meets us here and loves us into light. Jesus' love meets us at the very point of resistance and loves us into light. We are invited these three days to move forward along the narrative trajectory, to enter more deeply into the facets or aspects of this narrative, from the Last Supper, through crucifixion and death, to resurrection. Tonight we enter liturgically into the events of the Last Supper, with foot washing and the celebration of the Eucharist. And tonight, we begin to enter into the events leading up to the crucifixion. In the stripping of the altar, in the turning off of the lights and entering the darkness of the night, in meditating in the chapel as we keep watch with Jesus in the garden, until we too desert Jesus and go into the darkness, the darkness of the night, and tomorrow, liturgically, the darkness of Jesus' crucifixion and death. But we are reminded this night of the full extent of God's love for us in Jesus that loves us into light, even in the face of rejecting his love. And here he shows the full extent of love to us whose love is always incomplete. In vain we search the heavens high above the God of love is kneeling at our feet. Though we betray him, though it is night, he meets us here and loves us into light. So let us walk with Jesus through narrative time over these next three days, entering liturgically into its various facets. Let us do this knowing at all points that Jesus' self-giving love for us and all is constant through it all, whether or not we struggle to accept it, loving us into light. Amen.
taught us that what we do for the least of our brothers and sisters, we do also for you. Give us the will to be the servant of others as you were the servant of all, and gave up your life and died for us, but are alive and reign now and forever. Amen. In the power of the Spirit, let us pray to the Father, through Christ, the Saviour of the world. Father, on this night, the night he was betrayed, your son Jesus Christ washed his disciples' feet. We commit ourselves to follow his example of love and service. Lord, hear us. On this night, he prayed for his disciples to be one. We pray for the unity of your church. Lord, Hear us. Amen. On this night, he prayed for those who were to believe through his disciples' message. We pray for the mission of your church. Lord, hear us. Amen. On this night, he commanded his disciples to love, but suffered rejection himself. We pray for the rejected and unloved. Lord, hear us. On this night, he reminded his disciples that if the world hated them, it hated him first. We pray for those who are persecuted for their faith. Lord, hear us. And give us your peace. On this night, he accepted the cup of death and looked forward to the new wine of the kingdom. We remember those who have died in the peace of Christ. Lord, hear us. And welcome all your children into paradise. Jesus says, peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Do not let your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us offer one another a sign of peace. Peace be with you, peace be with you, peace be with you at home. Peace be with you, peace be with you, peace be with you.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have these gifts to share. Accept and use our offerings for your glory and for the service of your kingdom. Blessed be God forever. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right to give you thanks, Father most holy, through Jesus Christ our Lord. For on this night he girded himself with a towel and taking the form of a servant washed the feet of his disciples. He gave us a new commandment that we should love one another as he has loved us. Knowing that his hour had come, in his great love, he gave this supper to his disciples to be a memorial of his passion, that we might proclaim his death until he comes again and feast with him in his kingdom. Therefore, earth unites with heaven to sing a new song of praise, we too join with angels and archangels as they proclaim your glory without end. Merciful God, we thank you for these gifts of your creation, this bread and this wine, and we pray that by your word and Holy Spirit, we who eat and drink them may be partakers of Christ's body and blood. On this night that he was betrayed, Jesus took bread, and when he had given you thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, take, eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way after supper, he took the cup and again giving you thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, drink from this all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Therefore we do as our Saviour has commanded, proclaiming his offering of himself, made once for all upon the cross, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming again, we celebrate with this bread and this cup, his one perfect and sufficient sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. Great is the mystery of faith.
Renew us by your Holy Spirit. Unite us in the body of your Son and bring us with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Saint Augustine of Canterbury and all your people into the joy of your eternal kingdom. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of never-ending praise. As our Saviour Christ has taught us, in our own language or tradition, we are confident to pray, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. We who are many are one body, for we all share in the one bread. Draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood, which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. We do not presume to come to your table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord, whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen.
Following our post-communion prayer, we will process um, sort of around the church and back into the Lady Chapel with the Blessed Sacrament towards the altar of repose. Do join in the procession as it passes you and do follow into the chapel as best you can. There will then be the watch and you're welcome to stay as long as you like or are able. Do, if you find yourself without a chair, bring some of the chairs um, forward from the washing of the feet and they can be sort of scattered around here as you, as you look on. But do be careful of the water as you do that. Nobody will be here beyond midnight. At midnight, our watch ends and like the disciples, we scatter, we disperse into the night. The watch is not a competition. It's not to see how long or how well we can do, but rather serves as a reminder that no matter how hard we try, we all, like the disciples, end up scattering into the night. We will return. Tomorrow, between 12 and 2, we have our reflections at the foot of the cross. And at 2 o'clock, we have the liturgy of the final hour, the, the great Good Friday liturgies. We will return to this place. But it will look a little different and feel a little different tomorrow. We stand to pray. Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you that in this wonderful sacrament, you have given us the memorial of your passion. Grant us so to reverence the sacred mysteries of your body and blood that we may know within ourselves and show forth in our lives the fruit of your redemption. For you are alive and reign now and forever. Amen. Most loving God, you send us into the world you love. Give us grace to go thankfully and with courage in the power of your spirit. Amen.
Soul of Christ, sanctify me. Body of Christ, save me. Blood of Christ, inebriate me. Water from Christ's side, wash me. Passion of Christ, strengthen me. O good Jesus, hear me. Within your wounds, hide me. Suffer me not to be separated from you. From the malicious enemy, defend me. In the hour of my death, call me and bid me come to you, that I may praise you with your saints and with your angels forever and ever. Amen. O Lord, God of my salvation, when at night I cry out in your presence, let my prayer come before you. Incline your ear to my cry. For my soul is full of troubles, and my life draws near to Sheol. I am counted among those who go down to the pit. I am like those who have no help, like those forsaken among the dead, like the slain that lie in the grave. like those whom you remember no more, for they are cut off from your hand. You have put me in the depths of the pit, in the regions dark and deep. Your wrath lies heavy upon me, and you overwhelm me with all your waves. You have caused my companions to shun me. You have made me a thing of horror to them. I am shut in so that I cannot escape. My eye grows dim through sorrow. Every day I call on you, O Lord. I spread out my hands to you. Do you work wonders for the dead? Do the shades rise up to praise you? Is your steadfast love declared in the grave or your faithfulness in Abaddon? Are your wonders known in the darkness or your saving help in the land of forgetfulness? But I, O oh Lord, cry out to you. In the morning, my prayer comes before you. O oh Lord, why do you cast me off? Why do you hide your face from me? wretched and close to death from my youth up. I suffer your terrors. I am desperate. 
Your wrath has swept over me. Your dread assaults destroy me. They surround me like a flood all day long. From all sides they close in on me. You have caused friend and neighbour to shun me. My companions are in darkness. 